Catherine Parr had been widowed twice, but she had yet to bear any children. When she became part of Mary Tudor's household, Henry's daughter from his first marriage had seen four women take her mother's place as Henry's wife. Catherine Parr was only a few years older than Mary, and the two became close. Parr also befriended Thomas Seymour. They even planned to marry soon. But that would change because King Henry had noticed Catherine too. In the late spring of 1543, Henry proposed to Catherine. After much consideration, she accepted. On July 12th, they were married. But Catherine did not marry Henry out of love. Far from it. She felt that she had more to accomplish as queen than romance. Catherine was a Protestant. Catholic officials, including the Bishop of Winchester, wanted to get rid of her, to take her out of Henry's life, afraid of the influence she might have on him. A warrant for her arrest was made in 1546, but somehow it managed to fall into Catherine's hands. Catherine was able to track down Henry, and she begged him to spare her. She begged for mercy. In a brilliant move, she told him that the only reason she had ever brought up religion in the first place was to take his mind off the pain that his leg was giving him. Henry believed her and spared her life. Catherine is one of Henry's most important wives in terms of English history because she was able to influence Henry to reunite with Mary and Elizabeth, restoring them to the line of succession. England would be a very different country if these two had not become queens. What makes Catherine so interesting to historians and writers today is that she herself was not just a wife or a queen, she was also a religious figure and, most importantly, was some like me, a writer herself. She wrote two books in her lifetime, both published after her death. Her first book was titled Prayers and Meditations, published in 1547, which was the first book published by a woman and a queen in England. Her second book was The Lamentations of Sinners. Her marriage to Henry was relatively quiet as Henry's condition worsened. Being obese at the time did not help because he suffered from ailments that historians who attributed to syphilis. Henry finally died on the 28th of January, 1547, at the age of 55. Before Henry's death, he gave Catherine an allowance and ordered that she be treated as a queen, not simply a dowager queen. This shows that he respected her. She encompassed many great skills and characteristics of Henry's other wives. She is typically depicted as a sweet woman, nursing the sick king, and is typically called the survivor out of Henry's wives because she outlived him, even if only for a few years. And not that this matters any, Catherine Parr was one of my favorites of Henry VIII's wives to research. But don't get me wrong, I like all of his wives. They're all so different in their own way and have made such an impact in English history in one way or another. Plus, they've entered pop culture more than most wives of famous rulers do. There are so many books and films out there dedicated to them and Henry VIII that it is very obvious that these women are so popular and memorable that we still talk about them quite frequently, even to this day, hundreds of years later. That says something right there. And maybe that's part of the appeal of the story. It's not just the bluebeard-like tale of the obese king and his six wives, as some people might initially think. The personality and lives of his wives have filled our minds for centuries. These women range from many different backgrounds, noble, royal. Some people might write these women off with one more description. Catherine is the first wife or the old woman. Anne Boleyn is seductive and mysterious. Jane Seymour is quiet or motherly. Anne of Cleves is thought to be ugly, but I think this is a great disservice to this poor woman and it is an exaggeration of her appearance. Catherine Howard 
is written off as being simply the dumb or the sexy teenager, very promiscuous, but airheaded. And Catherine Parr is simply called the survivor. But there was so much more to these women than that. They were bold, fierce, intelligent, and kind women who definitely deserve to be remembered for centuries to come. This is the Many Faces of Khan warning you that if you plan on marrying an English king, be careful not to lose your head. Divorce, beheaded, and died. Divorce, beheaded, survived. I'm Henry VIII, I had six sorry wives. You could say I ruined their lives. Exciting news! Henry VIII is looking for a new wife! Oh no. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs>